Hello everyone, I'm Mike Finkel, Artistic Director for the Dallas Jazz Piano Society. Thanks for joining us for our final concert of the 2021-22 season, and it's so nice to see crowds out again at the show. Uh, the streaming, because these concerts, again, we have live audience where it's also streamed and then archived on our YouTube page. The streaming for the entire season was sponsored by the John and Bonnie Strauss Foundation. And this hall and the nine foot, $250,000 Shigiri Grand Piano, the Kent's threatening to take home. I'm not sure how it's gonna s strap on the top of your car. But that's provided by Kauai Piano Gallery. And our broadcast tonight, uh, the audio and visuals are produced by Ken Boom for second floor audio and video and assisted by Aubrey Seaton. Now, tonight's show is not sponsored, so we haven't come up with a sponsor yet, but what we're gonna do, Lynn, tell us about your base. Okay, so we'll start bidding for the base at three hundred. <laughs> no, that would be undignified. We ran a silent private auction the past two weeks, and what Lynn does not realize at this point, that's just a hologram, and it can only make zither noises. So I hope third man theme is on the program tonight. <laughs> no, but we're fine. We, we, sponsorship helps pay for the musicians, but I mean, we certainly have other funds, but it is a great benefit. And if anyone is interested in sponsoring a show next season, you can speak with Judy, who will be back at the back table shortly. And that pays for all of the musician fees, which is great because we like having musicians on concerts. <laughs> so let me tell you about next season. I mentioned it last month, but not everybody was here. Our seasons run September through May. There's a chance, and watch our Instagram and Facebook page, there's a chance we may add a summer show again this year. We did last year, we had a duo show featuring Ken Ellingson and Stephen Harlos that we added in. And in fact, Kent's not out here now, but Kent appeared on, oh, is he over there? I can see you behind the poster. Kent appeared on our summer show. He filled in last minute on a show for us and he's on this one. So that makes Kent Ellingson the MVP of this season. There's no, the there's no trophy. What's the prize? Is it this nine and a half foot grand piano? No, there's a couple waters in the back. Right. <laughs> but next season, we're going to start in September with a first time performer on our series, Joe McBride. Uh, we don't have an exact theme, but he's going to do something about standards, Joe's way. October. We have Hip Hop Meets Jazz. A rapper, I'll say, Carcion, is going to play with Freddie Jones, Frederick Sanders, and I, and a drummer to be in determined. November will be Tiago Nascimento, who does classical, jazz, all sorts of stuff. December will be Carlos Averhoff doing Latin jazz and playing songs from his new album. January will be Brad Williams appearing again. No theme known yet. I'm not sure. I, I we'll say Brad's going to do the music of Spike Jones at this point. Uh, February, Miles Tate and I have been talking about this for a while. He's going to do the music of Miles Davis. 
And then in March, Ashley Smith will be in with her group uh, for our Women of Song program. April will be rising stars once again. We hope to feature Christopher Lawson Palmer, possibly for the third time, if he keeps his game up, Christopher. And then next May, Piano Madness. This is sadly a Kent Ellingson free year. What's going on here? Uh, Piano Madness next year will feature Tony Palos, Kelly Durbin, and Peter Rowe, along with, hopefully, Lynn and Steve again. So, repeat after me. What is Piano Madness? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> piano Madness, generally, on our shows, we've always had three pianists. But this year, Kent and Eric are so awesome, we only need two pianists on this year's show. What happens, they'll each do, and the program's all kind of mixed up, as you can see, they'll each do one solo piano piece. They'll do two pieces together where it's just them. Each of them will do two pieces with the trio, and then we'll have just the madness of two pianists with the drums and bass on a couple of songs, including our closer. And I think that's the way Dan had set it up back originally on our first Piano Madness show. So we're given a chance to see them in a variety of formats. Now, if we, uh, and Ken's wife knows this well being a therapist, Sigmund Freud uh, refers to Piano Madness as a malady where patients are obsessed with the number 88. Furthermore, if you look in their closets, their dark clothes are arranged in groups of three and two and three and two and three and two. So that's part of the piano madness. The other thing is people suffering from piano madness tend to have odd names for their children. They may name them Thelonious Sphere. They may name them Elton. Uh, some have even been known to name their sons Nina Simone. So there's various things that happen with Piano Madness. It is sadly contagious, so check with your doctors later on. But let's have some music. Who's going to start us out here? We are going to open with... These are not prescriptions, so I can't see well. We're going to open with Eric and Kent doing Straight No Chaser by Thelonious Sphere Monk. All right, wake it up.
first three, of course, was a theory of smoke screen called straight rotation. And Eric and I both played together on that. And uh, some of this will involve just trios with uh, one pianist. And so it's now my turn to play one of my trio tunes. Um, I don't know, was uh, there a few of here, a few of you here who were here when um, a couple of months ago when uh, I performed uh, a concert uh, of basically the Toy Timer theme, the theme that he had been playing? Okay, so one of the tunes that I didn't get a chance to play that night is a tune I'm going to play for you now. This is called Search for Peace.
Eric's being a little modest there maybe in my mind I want to say something. I've had two, maybe three students come in at times when I was teaching and they said, I've got this recording by my favorite pianist and I want to learn this solo. And I said, great. Would you have something by McCoy Tyner, Herbie Hancock? And they all said, no, Eric Willis.
for this next one. Uh, it's going to be all four of us playing this time. This is a Chick Corea tune from, I believe, the My Spanish Heart recording of what, 1976? Maybe? This is called Armando Zamba.
Okay, so I guess it's my turn to do a solo piece now, I guess. I'm not sure what it is, I guess it's that one. Okay. Ah! I've got a, I've got a big loud voice I can do. Sounds like Trina. Huh? Trina Mello. Oh, hi! <laughs> it's only my voice volume. Okay, it's weird talking with my face to the audience, but I'm going to play a solo piece now. This is Body and Soul by, I believe, Frank Green.
we're going to play for you now a Cole Porter classic called Just One of Those Things.
we forgot, or maybe we need a little more acknowledgement for the two important guys in the back here. Lynn Seaton on the bass. <laughs> and Steve Barnes on the drums. And if you enjoyed tonight's concert and you need some more jazz for your summer, go on YouTube, search for Dallas Jazz Piano Society. You can watch this concert again. You can watch concerts from all of this season, concerts from several seasons. And viewing this concert on YouTube is going to be totally different. One thing you get that you don't see out there in the audience is that camera right there looking straight down on their hands. Does Chris Christopher already leave? I was going to say that's his summer assignment to watch these videos and <laughs> pick up what these guys are doing with their hands overhead. But it, it really is a great show and you should watch it again and watch some of the other programs like the music of McCoy Tyner featuring Ken Ellingson from earlier this season. The other thing, the other people we need to thank is all of you. This is incredible. The crowds starting in about January have been amazing. It's, we kind of got used to for a while playing in a room by ourselves and streaming the concerts. I mean, things, things were weird for everybody in 2020 and 2021, but things were really weird for musicians. I don't, I don't know how you guys handled it. Every Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, I'd pack up my equipment in the car, I'd drive around for 20 or 30 minutes, I'd drive back to my house, I'd come in the service entrance through the kitchen where my wife had gathered 15 or 20 people that don't speak English that I had to negotiate around then I'd play three sets, and my wife would have to clap for me at eight, nine, and 10. <laughs> but to make it even more realistic, while I played, she watched TV and called her friends on the phone. <laughs> and then once in a while, she'd take some pocket change and put it in the tip jar. I'd pack up my equipment, drive around for 20 or 30 minutes, come back home, and she'd ask me how the gig went. And I went, eh. I thought I played well, but the crowd wasn't into it and the tips were really sparse. And she'd say, maybe next, tomorrow will be better. So it's really, I don't know how many, have you guys played for a lot of crowds recently, seeing people coming back on your gigs? Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing how much you appreciate it now when we spent a couple years without crowds. So thanks to all of you here tonight and everyone that's been here throughout the season. Gonna let these guys play one more song to end the night.
Johnny, thanks for coming, man.